the second leading cause of death by a cancer that is preventable. When was your last colonoscopy? Good evening. This is Scarlett Lee reporting to you live from BBC Studios in Los Angeles. The CDC has reported that over 70,000 men are being diagnosed with colorectal cancer every year, and 26,000 deaths may have been prevented. Yet in the population of males between the ages of 50 to 75, with the highest indication for colorectal cancer screening, less than 60% have reported to have had a colonoscopy. Sources cite many barriers for the low rate of screening, with underserved communities feeling the greatest impact. Chief BBC correspondent Linda Yu is our Ronald Reagan UCLA with details. Linda? Hi Scarlett, I'm here reporting live at UCLA Ronald Reagan to cover this ongoing issue about the adherence to colonoscopy screening in men aged 50 and over. Some health disparities seem to be the issue here, and the key findings are that the recommended age to start colonoscopy is 50, but reported screening tests was greater among people aged 50, 65 and over than those aged 50 to 64. Also, African American men have the highest incidence of colorectal cancer, but the number of people obtaining appropriate screening was greater for non-Hispanic whites compared to all other races. Black participants were less likely than white participants to undergo colonoscopy. Most likely due to lacking a primary care physician or living in a low-income community with limited access to gastroenterologists. Also, black participants may more commonly lack insurance to cover the costs. And the problem here is that even with insurance, the out-of-pocket costs of colonoscopy can be prohibitive for people with low incomes. We're also finding that most of the African-American men who received a past screening had greater than a high school education or were married. Overall, use of colonoscopy screening among minorities is less than non-Hispanic whites. And regardless of race, those with health insurance are far more likely to get a colonoscopy screening. Dr. Kim, can you tell us a little about colorectal cancer and the screenings that you recommend? Sure. Colorectal cancer is a malignant tumor that arises in the walls of large intestine, including the rectum. Um, common symptoms include abdominal pain, <laughs> blood in stool, and frequent stools and fatigue. U.S. Preventative Service and Task Force strongly recommends with grade A annual checkup for fecal blood test, sigmoidoscopy every 5 years, and colonoscopy every 10 years for adults between the age of 50 to 75. During complete colonoscopy, a physician inserts a long flexible endoscope that looks like this up through the patient's anus. The goal is to scan the entire colon for cancerous or precancerous polyps. If polyps or lesions are found, it can either be taken out for further analysis or be removed during the procedure so that no additional surgery is needed. What are some risks and limitations? Limitations include patient compliance of ball prep, skills of the examiner, and the completeness of the procedure. A research shows that colonoscopy is less effective, effective for detection of right-sided lesions. This is because right side, which is further away from the anus, is more difficult to navigate and the polyps arise in light right colon is more flat and more difficult to detect. Also, ball preparation procedure may be less effective at clearing the right side of the colon. The risks involved with colonoscopy include heavy bleeding, GI perforation and death, although risk of serious complication is very low at, le at less, than, less than 1%. As you can see in the graph, more people have been receiving the screening and results in, resulted in the decline of mor morbidity and mortality of the colorectal cancer. Omar, could you tell us about what you know about your risk of being diagnosed with colorectal cancer? Like many people, I really don't know much about colorectal cancer. I thought it was just an uncommon disease. But to my surprise, my doctor told me this is actually the third most common disease and it affects only one out of 19. On top of that, the risk increases with my age, over 50, obesity, smoking, heavy alcohol use, diet high in red meat, certain genetic factors, thanks mom, family history of colorectal and other cancers, and inflammatory bowel disease. Since I have some of these factors, I figure I might be a higher risk. Now, do you know anything about how severe colorectal cancer can be? I really don't know much about the specifics. I just assume it's just like 
any other cancer. So if it's detected early, doctors can be able to surgically remove the cancers or the chemo. And if it's detected late, usually the person doesn't have a very high chance of surviving for a long time. Right, well, what would you say the benefits of getting the screenings are? My doctor said that if I have any pulps that can get the, take them out and prevent them from turning into cancer, the early detection of cancer will increase my chances of survival. There is also the ad added benefit of saving money in the long run because if the cancer is detected early, there won't be any need for extensive and expensive medical treatment. Who doesn't like to save money, right? While we're on the subject of money, has the cost of colonoscopy been a barrier for you? Yes, it has. Since my insurance deductible is so high, I have to pay about $500 for an out-of-pocket procedure. Were there any other factors that prevented you from getting the screening? Yes, of course. The possibility of finding cancer scared me a bit at first. Another thing that worried me was whether the procedure would be painful and uncomfortable. Also, they told me you, all, you have to drink some kind of a special preparation juice, which doesn't taste good and causes so much discomfort. Luckily for me, scheduling an appointment and transportation were not barriers. Great. So given all these barriers, what made you finally decide to get screened? First, when my doctor found out I had no colonoscopy, he strongly encouraged me to look into it. But I'm a man, so I really don't have to do it. But my wife, however, kept telling me to call, 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 make an appointment, make an appointment. But so, be, but so because of my doctor's recommendation and my wife's loving encouragement, I finally got the appointment. Do you think you would have gotten an appointment sooner if you had personally known someone who suffered through colorectal cancer? Yeah, definitely. Great, so what kind of resources did your doctor provide for you? Well, Dr. Johan went over all the steps of colonoscopy, from the preparation to the procedure itself. He answered all my questions, and he re even referred me to this colonoscopy center at UCLA. So now I'm very glad I know what to expect from the procedure, and I'm less anxious. Glad to hear. Thank you for your time, Omar. My pleasure. At CNL, what would you say would be an effective strategy for increasing adherence to colonoscopy screenings? Well, what we see in research is that primary care physician recommendations for screening are powerful predictors for patient screening behaviors. Other important interventions should be aimed at changing individual perceptions. As healthcare providers, we need to better communicate the risks associated with preventable diseases. In addition, emphasizing the benefits of screenings as well as addressing certain barriers will further increase adherence to screenings. Do most men have similar level of understanding of colonoscopies and how do they face the same barriers? Healthcare professionals actually incorrectly assume that they do have this similar understanding. But at CNL, um, our job should be to ensure that the interventions we plan are tailored to different patient demographics. Would you say that since most people have access to internet nowadays, they're more informed about colon colonoscopies? Um, actually, what we are seeing is that most people are very uninformed about the screenings. So I have been working on developing computer-based educational programs that can be utilized to uh, explain colonoscopies and colorectal cancer with a focus on benefits of getting screened. That's very interesting. You're using technology in the hospital setting to deliver information to the patients. And you mentioned reaching out to the physicians themselves. Absolutely. Research shows that doctors are more apt to provide patient education and encourage booking an appointment when they receive electronic reminders that their patients are overdue for a colonoscopy. As a member of a professional a multidisciplinary team, I help the physicians in setting up and um, setting up the electronic reminders. In addition, when patients receive educational pamphlets and instructions for direct scheduling of colonoscopies in the mail, they comply much more with the screening. So as a CNL, I gather the resources to be sent to patients' homes, which is possibly the first step towards health promotion and prevention. What sorts of social implications of the current screening recommendations enhance the colonoscopy screening? Uh, language barriers and health illiteracy among ethnic minorities such as Hispanics and Asians are major concerns. So in Asian American um, populations especially, there is a fear of burdening the family financially and emotionally. <clears throat> So to combat these issues, we can set up a phone-in navigation system that um, caters to such populations, providing patient and family education, 
procedure scheduling, and help with transportation and insurance coverage. We can anticipate upwards of twofold increases in colonoscopy patients through such implementations. Um, so this would lead to a larger patient population getting the screening and getting treatment earlier in the stages of cancer and lessening the future burden. <clears throat> Currently, coverage of colorectal cancer screening tests is mandated by the Affordable Care Act under Medicare, but the same rule doesn't apply to health funds that were in place before the act was passed. Those plans were covered by other federal laws and as well as state laws, which vary widely from state to state. Thus, political barriers are definitely a major factor that needs to be monitored. There are programs such as the Colorectal Cancer Control Program, which funds 25 states across the United States, providing screening services to low-income men aged 50 to 64 years who are underinsured. That was very informative, Tudui. Thank you for your time. No problem. And back to the studio. Thank you, Linda, for the report. For further information on colorectal screening, make sure to visit cdc.org. And if you're looking to enroll a loved one in a colonoscopy screening, please visit www.cheapcolonoscopy.com. Good night.